the Lotus Sutra, Chapter 16, Revelation of the Eternal Life of the Tathagata. At that time, the Buddha said to the Bodhisattvas and all the great assembly, Believe and discern, all you good sons and daughters, the true word of the Tathagata. Again, he said to the great assembly, Believe and discern the true word of the Tathagata. And again, he said to all the great assembly, Believe and discern the true word of the Tathagata. Then the great host of bodhisattvas, Maitreya at their head, folded their hands and said to the Buddha, World honored one, be pleased to expound the matter and we will believingly receive the Buddha's words. Thus they spoke three times, repeating the words, Be pleased to expound the matter, and we will believingly receive the Buddha's words. Then the world-honored one, perceiving that the bodhisattvas thrice without ceasing repeated their request, addressed them, saying, Listen, all of you, attentively to the secret, mysterious, and supernaturally pervading power of the Tathagata. All the worlds of gods and men and asuras consider. Now has Sakyamuni Buddha come forth from the palace of the Sakya clan and seated at the training place of enlightenment, not far from the city of Gaia, has attained perfect enlightenment. But, my good sons and daughters, since I veritably became Buddha, there have passed infinite, boundless hundreds of thousands of myriads of kotis, of nayutas, of kalpas. Thereupon, the Buddha addressed all those bodhisattva mahasattvas. Good sons and good daughters, now I must clearly announce and declare to you. From that time forward, I have constantly been preaching and teaching in this Saha world and also leading and benefiting all living beings in other places, good sons and daughters. During this time, I have ever spoken of myself as the Buddha of Burning Light and other Buddhas, and also have told of their entering into Nirvana. Thus have I tactfully described them all. Good sons and daughters, whenever living beings come to me, I behold with a Buddha's eyes all the faculties, keen or dull, of their faith, and so on. And I explain to them, in stage after stage, according to their capacity and degree of salvation, my different names and the length of my lives. And moreover, I plainly state that I must enter nirvana. I also, in various tactful ways, preach the wonderful lotus flower law which is able to cause all the living to beget a joyful heart. Good sons and daughters, beholding the propensities of all the living toward lower things, to these men and women the Tathagata declares, quote, In my youth I left home and attained perfect enlightenment. But since I verily became Buddha, thus have I ever been, and thus have I made declaration, only by my tactful methods to teach and transform all living beings so that they may enter the way of the Buddha. Good sons and daughters, all the sutras which the Tathagata preaches are for the deliverance of the living. Whether speaking of himself or speaking of others, whether indicating himself or indicating others, and whether indicating his own affairs or the affairs of others, Whatever he says is all real and not empty air. Wherefore? Because the Tathagata knows and sees the character of the triple world as it really is. To him, there is neither birth nor death, or going away or coming forth, neither living nor dead, neither reality nor unreality, neither thus nor otherwise. Unlike the way the triple world beholds the triple world, the Tathagata clearly sees such things as these without mistake. Because all the living have various natures, 
various desires, various activities, various ideas and reasonings, so desiring to cause them to produce the roots of goodness, the Tathagata, by so many reasonings, parables, and discourses, has preached his various truths. The Buddha deeds which he does have never failed for a moment. Thus it is, since I became Buddha in the very far distant past, that my lifetime is of infinite kalpas, forever existing and immortal. Good sons and good daughters, the lifetime which I attained by pursuing the Bodhisattva way is not even yet accomplished, but will still be twice the previous number of kalpas. But now, in this unreal nirvana, I announce that I must enter the real nirvana. In this tactful way, the Tathagata teaches all living beings. Wherefore, if the Buddha abides long in the world, men and women of little virtue who do not cultivate the roots of goodness and are spiritually poor and mean, greedily attached to the five desires, and are caught in the net of wrong reflection and false views, if they see the Tathagata constantly present and not extinct, they will then become puffed up and lazy and unable to conceive the idea that it is hard to meet the Buddha or a mind of reverence for him. Therefore, the Tathagata tactfully teaches, quote, No, bhikshus and bhikshunis, the appearance of Buddhas in the world is a rare occurrence. Wherefore, in the course of countless hundreds of thousands of myriad of kotis of kalpas, some men and women of little virtue may happen to see a Buddha, or none may see him. For this reason I say, quote, Bhikshus and bhikshunis, a Tathagata may rarely be seen. All these living beings, hearing such a statement, must certainly realize the thought of the difficulty of meeting a Buddha and cherish a longing and thirst for him. Then will they cultivate roots of goodness. Therefore, the Tathagata, though he does not in reality become extinct, yet announces his extinction. Again, good sons and good daughters, the method of all Buddha Tathagatas is always like this, in order to save all the living, and it is altogether real and not false. Suppose, for instance, a good physician who is wise, conversant with medical art, and skillful in healing all sorts of diseases. He has many sons and daughters, say ten, twenty. Because of some matter, he goes abroad to a distant country. After his departure, his children drink his poisonous medicines, which send them into a delirium, and they lie rolling on the ground. At this moment, their father comes back to his home. Of the children who drank the poison, some have lost their senses, others are still sensible. But on seeing their father approaching in the distance, they are all greatly delighted, and kneeling, salute him, asking, How good it is that you are returned in safety. We, in our foolishness, have mistakenly dosed ourselves with poison. We beg that you will heal us and give us back our lives. The father, seeing his children in such distress, in accordance with his prescriptions, seeks for good herbs, together, perfect in color, scent, and fine flavor, and then pounds, sifts, and mixes them, and gives them to his children to take, speaking thus. This excellent medicine, with color, scent, and fine flavor, altogether perfect, you may now take, and it will at once get rid of your distress, so that you will have no more suffering. Those among the children who are sensible, seeing this excellent medicine, with color and scent, both good, take it immediately, and are totally delivered from their illness. The others, who have lost their senses, seeing their father come, though they are also delighted, salute him, and ask him to heal their illness, yet when he offers them the medicine, they are unwilling to take it. Wherefore, because the poison has entered deeply, they have lost their senses, and even 
in regard to this medicine of excellent color and scent, they acknowledge that it is not good. The father reflects thus, Alas, for these sons and daughters afflicted by this poison and their minds unbalanced. Although they are glad to see me and implore to be healed, yet they are unwilling to take such excellent medicine as this. Now I must arrange an expedient plan so that they will take this medicine. Then he says to them, You should know that I am now worn out with old age, and the time of my death has now arrived. This excellent medicine I now leave here. You may take it and have no fear of not being better. After thus admonishing them, he departs again for another country and sends a messenger back to inform them, quote, Your father is dead. And now, when those sons and daughters hear that their father is dead, their minds are greatly distressed, and they thus reflect, If our father were alive, he would have pity on us, and we should be saved and preserved. But now he has left us and died in a distant country. Now we feel we are orphans and have no one to rely on. Continuous grief brings them to their senses, and they recognize the color, scent, and excellent flavor of the medicine, and thereupon take it, their poisoning being entirely relieved. The father, hearing that the sons are all recovered, seeks an opportunity and returns so that they all see him. All my good sons and good daughters, what is your opinion? Are there any who could say that this good physician had committed the sin of falsehood? No, world-honored one. The Buddha then said, I also am like this. Since I became Buddha, infinite, boundless, hundred thousand myriads of kotis, of nayotas, kalpas ago, for the sake of all living beings, by my tactful power, I have declared that I must enter nirvana. Yet there is none who can accuse me of the error of falsehood. At that time, the world honored one, desiring to proclaim this teaching over again, spoke thus in verse. Since I attained Buddhahood, the kalpas through which I have passed are infinite thousands of myriads of kotis of Asamkhayeya years. Ceaselessly preached I the law and taught countless kotis of creatures to enter the way of the Buddha. Since then are unmeasured kalpas. In order to save all creatures, by tactful methods I reveal nirvana. Yet truly, I am not yet extinct, but forever here, preaching the law. I forever remain in this world, using all my spiritual powers, so that all creatures, though I am near, yet fail to see me. All looking on me as extinct, everywhere worship my relics, all cherishing longing hearts, and beget thirsting hearts of hope. When all creatures have believed and obeyed, in character upright, in mind gentle, wholeheartedly wishing to see the Buddha, not caring for their own lives, then I, with all the Sangha, appear together on the divine vulture peak. And then I tell all creatures that I exist forever in this world, by the power of tactful methods, revealing myself extinct, and not extinct. If in other regions there are beings, reverent and with faith aspiring, again I am in their midst to preach the supreme law. You, not hearing of this, only say I am extinct. I behold all living creatures sunk in the sea of suffering. Hence I do not reveal myself, but set them all aspiring till, when their hearts are longing, I appear to preach the law. In such supernaturally pervading power, throughout Asam Kayeya Kalpas, I am always on the divine vulture peak and in every other dwelling place. When all the living see 
at the Kalpa's end, the conflagration when it is burning. Tranquil is this realm of mine, ever filled with heavenly beings, parks, and many palaces, with every kind of gem adorned. Precious trees full of blossoms and fruits, where all creatures take their pleasure. All the gods strike the heavenly drums and evermore make music, showering Mandarava flowers on the Buddha and his great assembly. My pure land will never be destroyed. Yet all view it as being burned up, and grief and horror and distress fill them all like this. All those creatures, by reason of their evil karma, through Asamkayaya Kalpas, hear not the name of the precious three. But all who perform virtuous deeds and are gentle and of upright nature, these all see that I exist and am here expounding the law. At times for all this throng, I preach the Buddha's life is eternal. To those who at length see the Buddha, I preach that a Buddha is rarely met. My intelligence power is such, my wisdom light shines infinitely. My life is of countless kalpas, from long cultivated karma obtained. You who have intelligence, do not in regard to this beget doubt, but bring it forever to an end. For the Buddha's words are true, not false. Like a physician who with clever device in order to cure his demented sons and daughters, though indeed alive, announces his own death, yet cannot be charged with falsehood, I too, being the father of this world, who heals all misery and affliction for the sake of the perverted people, though truly alive, say I am extinct. Lest, because always seeing me, they should beget arrogant minds, be dissolute, and set in their five desires, and fall into evil paths. I, ever knowing all beings, those who walk or walk not in the way, according to the right principles of salvation, expound their every law, ever making this my thought. How shall I cause all the living to enter the way supreme and speedily accomplish their Buddhahood.